Many thanks for joining us on the newsroom. I'm Sinisola Adigun. The Federal High Court in Abuja has granted the suspended Accountant General of the Federation, Idris Ahmed, bail barely a week after he was remanded in prison. In his judgment, the presiding judge, Justice Adeyemi Ajayi, adopted all the terms and conditions of the administrative bail granted by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, to the former AGF and his two co-defendants. The trial judge gave the ruling on grounds that the allegations against the defendants are yet to be proven. Idris and his co-defendants were arraigned following a 14-count charge bordering on theft and criminal breach of trust to the tune of 109.5 billion naira preferred against them by the federal government. Gunmen have reportedly attacked the Kremberg Construction Company in Owo, Ondo State. The chief security officer of the company, Tuboson Ala Deselu, who confirmed the incident, said the attackers, two in number, arrived in a bus at about 9 p.m. on Wednesday and began shooting sporadically. He added that the attackers also made use of an explosive device. The CSO disclosed that policemen are currently at the scene while victims of the attack have been taken to hospital and are in stable conditions. Two months ago, an Patrick engineer of the company was abducted and a soldier guarding him was shot dead at a site also in Owo. The Minister of Information, Lai Mohammed, has described the threats by some terrorists to kidnap President Mohamed Buhari as laughable. Speaking at the end of the Federal Executive Council meeting in Abuja on Wednesday, the Minister of Information said while the menace of insecurity is not exclusive to Nigeria alone, the federal government is doing everything within its power to ensure that perpetrators are brought to book. On July 24, in a viral video, terrorists suspected to be members of Boko Haram threatened to abduct the president and governor of Kaduna State, Nasir El Rufai. Two new studies have provided compelling evidence that the coronavirus pandemic originated in a Wuhan, China market where live animals were sold, further supporting the theory that the virus emerged in the wild rather than escaping from a Chinese lab. The research, published online on Tuesday by the journal Science, shows that the Huanan seafood wholesale market was likely the early epicenter of the scourge that has now killed nearly 6.4 million people around the world. Scientists conclude that the virus that causes COVID-19 SARS-CoV-2 likely spilled from animals into people at two separate times. The federal government has approved 16.82 billion naira for the dualization of the 78-kilometer Kano Katsina Road project. This was made known to journalists by the Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, on Wednesday after the weekly Federal Executive Council meeting in Abuja. The minister added that the council had also procured 32 operational vehicles for the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, NDLEA, to enhance its operations. Recent scorecard by the World Health Organization, WHO, has revealed that more than 91 million Africans live with hepatitis B or C, which are the deadliest strains of the virus. The scorecard also found that coverage for routine childhood vaccination against hepatitis B is 72% for the region, which is well below the global target of 90% needed to ensure that the virus is no longer a public health menace. WHO Regional Director for Africa, Machidi Somoeti, said although hepatitis was a silent epidemic, the scorecard sounds an alarm for the region and the world. Moeti emphasized the need for hepatitis services to be moved out of specialized clinics to decentralized and integrated facilities where most Africans still seek care, adding that primary healthcare workers need to be trained to diagnose and treat the virus. In sports, the Confederation of African Football CAF has denied knowledge of any bid from Nigeria to jointly host the 2025 Africa Cup of Nations, insisting the tournament will be staged in Guinea. In January 2019, Guinea accepted an invitation to host the 2025 Nations Cup after CAF revised its host for the 2019, 2021 and 2023 editions. Meanwhile, PINIC, also a member of the governing council of world governing body FIFA, remains confident of the country's ability to stage the 2025 edition with neighbors being in. That's the latest on the newsroom. Join us again for more updates. Thank you for watching.